In the West, wars such as World War I, the American Civil War, and the Napoleonic Wars are often highlighted for their unprecedented devastation and the totality by which these wars were waged. However, even as Abraham Lincoln delivered his famous Gettysburg Address in the war-torn United States, another war, orders of magnitude more deadly, was waging in Imperial China. This conflict likely claimed more lives than the American Civil War, the Napoleonic Wars and World War I combined. Yet despite this, this conflict is largely overlooked and forgotten. Known as the Taiping Rebellion, this war saw the self-proclaimed Brother of Jesus rise up from a poor peasant family to lead a rebellion which led to the deaths of 20 to 30 million people. Some more outlandish estimates even suggest that this war caused a staggering 100 million deaths, potentially making it the most lethal war in all of human history. Join us today as we delve into the relatively unknown yet harrowing tale of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom's uprising against Imperial China. The story of the Taiping Rebellion begins in a small Chinese village with the birth of a peasant boy on January 1st, 1814. Named Hong, this boy belonged to the Hakka minority, a Han Chinese subgroup with very few rights or privileges. His family was very poor, but they valued education and recognized Hong's intelligence, encouraging him to study for the Imperial Civil Service examinations so that he could escape the grueling life of a Chinese peasant. Despite his efforts, Hong repeatedly failed these examinations. His failures were a source of great personal disappointment and shame, given the high value placed on official success by his family and the wider village he lived in. The turning point in his life came after his third failure in 1837. During this period, Hong experienced a severe mental breakdown, during which he had a series of mystical visions. His visions showed him that he had a family in heaven who were appalled by China's worship of demons. He also claimed that he saw Confucius being punished by the Heavenly Father for leading the Chinese people astray. Hong claimed that God had tasked him with ridding the world of demons, which included the corrupt Qing dynasty. After recovering, he encountered Christian missionary literature for the first time, which helped him interpret his visions in a Christian context. He concluded that he was the younger brother of Jesus Christ, sent to establish a heavenly kingdom on earth. Perhaps in another place or at another time, such claims of grandeur would have been dismissed as far-fetched nonsense. But China at this time was a powder keg, just waiting to be ignited. During the latter half of the 19th century, China was undergoing its so-called century of humiliation. Famines, natural disasters, widespread opium use and the defeat at the hands of foreign powers had made the Chinese emperor look weak and many began to believe that the Manchu Qing dynasty may have lost the mandate of heaven. Furthermore, China's population had nearly doubled over the 100 years preceding this period, leading to severe economic issues that undermined the ancient system of the Chinese. Famine-stricken peasants began leaving their land in droves, joining mystical secret societies, criminal gangs and numerous groups wishing to form their own fiefdoms. Thus, when Hong and a small group of followers began preaching their own interpretation of Christianity, named the God-Worshipping Society, they appealed to many who were disenchanted with the Qing dynasty's rule. Perhaps of greatest note were his radical ideas of redistributing land and equal rights between men and women, which no doubt contributed to his popularity during these early years. The movement led by Hong Xiuquan gained momentum in the late 1840s by subduing bands of bandits and pirates in southern China, swiftly amassing a following that soon numbered in the tens of thousands. However, the God-worshipping society faced severe religious persecution from local officials. This persecution culminated in a significant conflict in late December 1850, followed by a decisive battle in early January 1851. During this encounter, a rebel army of 10,000 organized by Feng Yunshan and Wei Changhui, overpowered the Qing forces at Jintian. This victory marked a pivotal moment for the Taipings, who successfully defended against a counter-attack by the Qing's Green Standard Army, aimed at quelling the Jintian uprising. 
On January 11, 1851, Hong Xiu Quan proclaimed himself the Heavenly King of the newly formed Heavenly Kingdom of Peace, also known as the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom. To evade the encroaching Qing forces, the Taipings embarked on a northward march in September 1851. Their journey led them through Hunan along the Xiang River, capturing key locations like Yuezhou and Wuchang by December 1852. Subsequently, the Taiping leadership opted to advance eastward along the Yangtze. The most significant milestone came on March 19, 1853, when the Taiping seized Nanjing, declaring it their heavenly capital. In their crusade against what they viewed as demonic Manchus, the Taipings brutally eliminated all Manchu men in the city and, in a horrific act, forced the Manchu women out of the city only to burn them alive. In 1853, a shift occurred in the Taiping hierarchy. Hong Xiuquan withdrew from day-to-day -day governance, choosing to rule solely through written proclamations. He indulged in luxury and maintained a large entourage of women, frequently issuing religious edicts. This period was marked by intense internal conflict and power struggles within the Taiping leadership, providing the Qing dynasty with an opportunity to consolidate their forces. Further undermining the Taiping's power was the stiff resistance from the rural traditionalist class, who were deeply opposed to its radical departure from Chinese customs and Confucian values. Consequently, these groups predominantly sided with the Qing government forces, presenting a significant challenge to the Taiping movement. Of particular note was the creation of the Xiang army by Zheng Guofan and Zhuo Zongtang. Eventually comprising of 360,000 soldiers, it was funded through local rulers, as opposed to the central government, forming the backbone of the Qing resistance against the Taiping Rebellion's forces of almost two million at its height. Despite the Qing dynasty's increased support and resources, the Taiping Rebellion achieved significant victories in the early 1860s. In May 1860, the Taiping forces triumphantly broke the siege of Nanjing, which had been ongoing since 1853. This victory was pivotal, as it not only eliminated the besieging imperial forces from the region, but also paved the way for Taiping to advance into the southern provinces of Jiangsu and Zhejiang. These areas were among the richest in the Qing Empire, making their capture a significant boost to the Taiping cause. In June 1861, the Taiping rebels initiated an assault to capture Shanghai, but their efforts were thwarted after 15 months of intense fighting. This defeat was largely due to the effective resistance put up by Qing troops, significantly bolstered by European officers under the leadership of Frederick Townsend Ward. This foreign-supported Qing force would later become known as the Ever-Victorious Army. Commanded by Charles George Gordon, it emerged as a well-trained and experienced military unit that played a crucial role in countering the Taiping advances. The failed attempt to take Shanghai marked a turning point in the Taiping Rebellion. Propelled by their successes at Shanghai, in May 1862, the Qing army initiated another siege on Nanjing, leveraging an army of meticulously trained peasant soldiers versed in Ming Dynasty tactics. During this period, Hong Xiuquan entrusted the leadership of the Taiping to his 15-year-old son, Hong Tianguifu, while proclaiming divine protection over Nanjing. In June 1864, Hong Xiuquan died likely from food poisoning due to scarce food supplies, although there is speculation about potential suicide. Shortly after, the Qing army captured Nanjing following intense combat, killing 100,000 civilians and Taiping soldiers in their wake. Hong Tianguifu tried to disassociate from the rebellion, but was captured and executed, using the brutal death by a thousand cuts technique. As for Hong Xiuquan, his ashes were fired from a cannon so that he could never find peace. At its conclusion, the rebellion had resulted in an estimated 20 to 30 million deaths, making it one of the deadliest conflicts in human history. The cost of suppressing the rebellion added to the financial strain on the Qing dynasty, accelerating its decline 
and contributing to the economic stagnation that plagued China into the early 20th century. The rebellion's suppression, aided significantly by Western powers, notably increased foreign influence in China, laying the groundwork for the unequal treaties and the spheres of influence established by foreign powers in the late 19th century. Make sure to subscribe with the notification bell on for future videos exploring the Opium Wars, the Boxer Rebellion and the eventual fall of China to the CCP.